Good morning. It is uh, Tuesday, May 12th. Um, I want to say an even day. I think it is an even day. Uh, on the new school calendar thing, today would be even. Uh, so it's Tuesday, May 12th, an even day. Uh, let's begin uh, our lesson. Uh, I'm moving ahead now. Now notice that little thingy. I'm uh, leaving up there because we're still going to be assigning oxidation numbers because half reactions are based on these changes in oxidation number and it's the half reactions that we use in the electrochemical cells and as I showed you the other day there are charts and lists which aren't on the Regents exams anymore they no longer ask you to calculate voltages but sometimes those voltages um, you know do become important so I'll give you an overview of voltages uh, but we won't have to be calculating it so what I'm going to do is this all right, take us back to uh, the picture of uh, the electrochemical system, both the electricity producer and the electricity user. And what I'm going to do now is focus. We're going to focus on the voltaic. Okay. So what I'm going to do is remember anode to cathode is still going to take place, and I'm going to write down a couple of phrases uh, that. If you remember, it makes it easier to answer some of the questions on this. But let me, I'm going to erase all of this now. <clears throat> and we're going to call these voltaic cells. These make volts. These have positive voltages and are spontaneous. All, right. All of these are redox reactions, uh, but the ones in the voltaic cell are spontaneous redox reactions. So the picture of the battery of the voltaic that was up here previously that I erased, and I'm going to be showing you the inner workings of those are, that's the spontaneous that has positive voltages. Your standard C cell, D cell, AA, AAA all have the same number of volts, 1.5 volts by chemical reaction. We're going to learn how some of those chemical reactions operate today. Okay. So at the very least, write these things down. They will come up in questions. I guarantee it. Okay. I am going to erase it because my board space is very, very limited. So I am. So pause, copy, and then pause, copy. And then unpause. Okay. Now, there are many different types of voltaic cells. Uh, you already know some of them. Like inside the car battery, it's a lead sulfate car battery. You have uh, a lead electrode, a lead oxide electrode. You have uh, uh, sulfuric acid and lead sulfate solutions within that battery and also produce hydrogen gas. So there's a lot going on in there. Uh, the standard, cell, standard cells use zinc in some way or form. Uh, some of them are zinc ammonium hydroxide. Uh, that's the, the standard one. There's the, uh, the nickel metal hydride, which I don't know the exact work, working of. The what they call the NICAD batteries, nickel cadmium. I'll actually give those to you. And there are a variety of different ones. Uh, I'm going to give you some background into how all of these generally work. Uh, in terms of voltaic cells, any cell system that makes electricity is voltaic. Then what we're going to diagram and look at is something called a galvanic cell. The galvanic cell is two beakers, two electrodes, and a salt bridge. Okay, two beakers, two electrodes, salt bridge, that's the uh, galvanic cell. Uh, in terms of the electrodes, it's cathode, 
that's an H, an anode, the cathode is positive, and the anode is negative. Now, uh, I'm probably going to do the next video lesson on this, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, maybe Friday, if not Friday, then Monday, I'm not sure. Um, what the schedule is going to allow for, I think, because I got to do the lab uh, along with this. So it's probably going to be Friday, more realistically. I'll give you the electrolytic cell uh, lesson. But for today, it's galvanic. And then maybe next week, a little review of those systems. And then another short castle learning assessment like the, the last couple have been. I'll, I'll try to keep them to like 10 questions or something. And then I don't even know if I'm going to bother putting up a test. Uh, if we've taken three quizzes on it, that, that ought to be enough uh, for a review. And then I'll uh, start going into organic chemistry, which would uh, start bringing us to the close. Right? But anyhow, so we've got these two electrodes, cathode and anode. The reason why I started talking about the next lesson, because in the next lesson, the cathode is going to be negative and the anode is going to be positive. But that's a different type of cell. It's not the voltaic cell system, it's the other cell. And if you remember, we connect cathode to anode and electrons go from anode to cathode. The cathode that we connect to the other anode, they have to have the same charge. So the battery establishes the charges. So you look to the battery or the voltaic cell. Those are usually labeled. Like when you get your battery, you look at your battery. Oh, it says plus and minus on it. And then how do you put it in? You put plus to plus and minus to minus on the other device. So it's the same way. Like things that you intuitively do when you put a battery in your flashlight or whatever device you're putting a battery in. Um, even in your cell phones, there's a battery in there. You usually don't look at it, but every once in a while you pull it out because the phone doesn't work right. And you're, you're trying to get the phone to reboot by taking the battery out. It's still positive to positive, negative to negative. Same thing. You know, between the two different cells. So we have two electrodes, cathode and anode. And just remember, red, cat, you can put sits or sleeps, whatever you want, sits or sleeps, on, and it's an, ox. And this is going to be true for both systems. It's reduction cathode, anode oxidation. Uh, if you want to amuse yourself later on, what you'll turn around and do is, you know, go onto the internet and put red cat and ox and images will come up, you know, discussions of batteries and stuff like this. This is a, you know, a commonly used uh, device to try and remember the difference between what occurs at the cathode and the anode. Okay. So all these things go into galvanic cells. Now, what I'm going to do for you today is label a specific type of galvanic cell. The specific type of galvanic cell is the Daniel cell. The Daniel cell is a galvanic cell, which is a voltaic cell. A voltaic cell is not necessarily a Daniel cell. A galvanic cell is not necessarily a Daniel cell, but a Daniel cell is a specific type of volta uh, galvanic cell, which is a type of voltaic cell. So specifically, I'm going to now go Daniel Cell, uh, pause, copy. Hopefully you now have unpaused. I forgot if it's Daniel or Danielle. I forgot if it's L-L-E or just I-E-L. It, it really doesn't matter. Okay, because it, it doesn't. It's Daniel Cell. I forgot if it's L-L-E. I think that's it. If it's not, if we're, we're doing a textbook assignment later on, you'll see it. It might be spelled with two L's without another E. I'm not 100% sure of the spelling. Again, that's neither here nor there. It's not a major issue. But here we're going to draw one. Beaker, beaker. A salt bridge is a piece of glass shaped like uh, a letter U. Sometimes it's called a U-tube, right? 
because it's shaped like a U, we're going to take that U, put it in there upside down. And again, if we were making this in class, we'll see it. Inside here is a salt solution. It's a salt solution. That's why they call it a salt bridge. And in each of these beakers, we're going to have an electrode. And for the Daniel cell, the solutions and the electrodes are specific. I talked to you about the car battery. Uh, it was lead and sulfuric acid. Uh, the rechargeable NICAD batteries is nickel and cadmium. The Daniel cell is zinc and copper. Okay, so I'm drawing a line here to represent the solutions that are in these. Right. And now the electrodes are going to be connected with a wire. And you can put a voltmeter in a little picture. Like when you see some of the pictures in books and maybe on the questions that I'll send you, you'll see voltmeters or a little light bulb or something that will use the electricity or show that the electricity is being, uh, you know, moving or deflecting a needle or something. Uh, I'm not really worried about that right now. I'm just going to take a wire, put a little terminal on here, put a terminal, and then we'll connect these with a wire. This is a wire. Okay. Wire is supposed to show direction of electron flow. Uh, we're going to determine where electrons go or which way they go based on where the negative electrode is or where the anode is because the anode is negative and electrons come out of the negative okay uh, we're going to know which one's the anode and cathode based on where oxidation and reduction it occurs and uh, our reference table uh, I think it's J reference table J is going to tell us where the more active metal is and the more active metals are towards the top. It's an oxidation list. So whatever metal is closer to the top will oxidize. Whichever metal is closer to the bottom will reduce. So I'll show you that. All right. So this is going to be zinc. So I'm going to use a symbol for zinc here. And this is going to be a zinc sulfate solution. Z-N-S-O-4-A-Q. Talked about spectators. Sulfate is going to be the spectator. That means the operative ion here is zinc positive 2. So it's zinc 2 and zinc. And in this solution, since I said it's going to be zinc and copper, this is copper. That's a copper electrode. This is going to be a copper sulfate solution. And again, AQ, it's aqueous. So I have Cu positive 2 in here. Sulfate is a spectator. Now, turn to reference table J. Pause, find your reference table, then unpause. All right, looking at J, uh, it should say activities. You're going to go to the metals, right? You're going to find ZN. When you go to that list, ZN is here. Copper is towards the bottom. Actually, copper is third one up from the bottom. It's one of the least active metals, okay? Uh, I know hydrogen is on there, but we talked about that hydrogen has both metallic and non-metallic properties. It's a true non-metal, but it does have some metallic activities, especially in replacement reactions. So that's why it's there with the metal side. It is a non-metal. So by doing that, we know that zinc, okay, is the one that's going to oxidize. So this side is, I'm going to write it down here. This side is where the oxidation is. This side <clears throat> is the anode. Right, because red cat and ox, and the anode is negative. Okay, copper is at the bottom, so that's where it's going to reduce. Okay, so this is going to be the reduction. We're going to call it the cathode, and it's positive, so those are the charges. So, which way do the electrons go with respect to the battery? It's out of the negative into the positive. So electrons are going to go, first off, the electrons go through the wire. That's what you got to realize. Because there have been Regents questions in the past. I know you're not taking the Regents exam, uh, but I give you the Regents questions. You probably will get a question, which way do the electrons go? Once you establish which one is higher on J, right, that's going to be the oxidation anode and negative. 
That's where the electrons go, and they don't go to the salt bridge. They go through the wire. That's been a question. Uh, there was a part two question, and they had students drawing electrons going through the, the salt bridge. It says, on the, in the answer booklet provided in the diagram, draw an arrow that shows the direction that electrons travel. Okay? They travel out of the zinc through the wire. What goes through the salt bridge? The salt bridge is, the salt bridge is for this. I'm going to draw an arrow down here. And I'm going to draw you a nifty little picture. Can you see that? Make it a little closer for you. That this is the reason for the salt bridge. What's the reason for the salt bridge? Ion migration. The reason for the salt bridge is to create ion migration. It allows the ions to migrate. Because when the electrons flow, we get a buildup of charge in the either beaker. Ions will migrate to mitigate that buildup of charge. So if you take the salt bridge out, the battery will stop. Okay? So that's the diagram of the Daniel cell. Uh, some of the facts that I told you to pause and copy, those are going to have to be memorized. Uh, I didn't write it down. Maybe you should write it down. Whatever is higher on table J will be the oxidized. Whatever is higher on table J will be the oxidized. Okay. Uh, we're going to have another video lesson uh, Friday. <clears throat> uh, you'll have your Zoom day, the normal day this week, either uh, Tuesday or Thursday on the Zoom day. Uh, You'll get the um, the lab. I think I told you that uh, in Mondays at Moto Post. All right. Have a great day, people. Bye.